Welcome to Lesson 7E, Simple Room Ventilation. This is the first part of several parts with room ventilation. This one I call Simple Room. We'll keep adding on to this as we go along. We're talking about dilution ventilation here, not displacement. So we're going to be able to show that this turns out to be a first order ODE and how to solve them to an example. Let's look at the well-mixed model. All we have in this room is some kind of a source of contaminant. We have a volume of the room. C, the mass concentration is a function of time. We have some supply air coming in that's at a certain concentration, CA or CS. And then we have exhaust coming out, which is also equal to Q because there's no other source of volume flow rate of air in here. The source itself produces very tiny amounts of the contaminants, so they're not adding any significant volume flow. So QE is equal to QS is equal to Q. There's no subscript here anymore. We're not going to use the J subscript. That's because we'll assume one contaminant. We can have more than one contaminant, but we'll deal with one contaminant at a time. And so we don't really need that J subscript anymore. We're going to assume well mix. That's why I have this fan shown up here, mixing up the air. And that just means that the concentration here or here or here or here is all the same. So C is only a function of time. We're bringing in air. That's clean air, cleaner, hopefully, with some CA. CA is sometimes zero or it's some small amount. So this is the mass concentration. The A means ambient and S equals supply. Later on, we're going to have to distinguish between QS and QE if you have an open window and some air is coming in or something like that. So we'll get into all that. We'll assume always that the volume is constant. Room volume doesn't change. So that's what's coming in. And then this is what's coming out. So CE, the E is exhaust. Architectural engineers, HVAC people use supply and return. Return is an odd word because this could go somewhere. It could go outside into the atmosphere. It could go into a duct. That part of it comes back and returns. It doesn't mean that it returns exactly back into the room. If it does, like in your house, you may exhaust air into ductwork and into your furnace. It heats up the air. It has some filters and stuff, and then it comes around and comes back in. So in that case, it would be a true return to the room. We'll use that notation, even though it may not always mean exactly return. We'll also let C of zero equal the mass concentration of species J. We're, we're removing the J subscript, so keep that in mind. So the mass concentration at T equals zero equal initial. And sometimes I'll write C naught here instead of C parentheses zero. If you look at this and you think back to a couple of weeks ago, this should remind you of something. What does this remind you of? It reminds me of a flux chamber, sir. That's right, BJ. This is exactly like a flux chamber, which we've talked about already. And so that makes these problems very simple in the sense that we already have the equations we already showed for a flux chamber. In that case, we would have a box of some kind. Here it's a room, but other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. You have some closed volume, you bring air in, ambient air. You have a source. In that case, for a flux chamber, we were trying to measure what this S is, the source strength. That's the mass flow rate of the contaminant. We assumed well mixed and we had air coming in, a source, we had air going out, and we would measure this and then from that calculate S. In a HVAC system, it's the same thing except we know S and we know these Qs, we want to predict C. So because it's like a flux chamber, therefore it's the same equations and the same solution technique, analytical solutions plus Runge-Kutta numerical solutions. So this is exactly like a flux chamber, except the whole room equals the flux chamber. This is a summary of what we're talking about here, our simple room ventilation, well-mixed conditions, and these are the properties. Room volume is constant. Supply and return volume flow rate are the same, again, because we're not adding any other volume flow rate. Source strength is also a constant. Ambient concentration of the contaminant is known. That's a constant. And then the mass concentration of the contaminant C in the room is a function of time. So we can write a conservation of mass equation for the contaminant, same as a flux chamber, except without subscript J. Here's the equation V dc dt equal QCA plus S minus QC. And I labeled each term. This guy is the rate of change of mass inside the room. 
I can write this as a kind of a word equation. And this all applies to the species mass conservation equation. This has nothing to do with the bulk airflow. This is just the species equation. Q's are the bulk flow rate of the air, though, the air coming in and out. So rate of change of mass of the species is equal to mass coming into the room. So this is called the supply air, also called makeup air, because you're making up air to replace stale air. So we call that makeup air, plus the source. So this is a production term. There's a production of mass of the species. So those are all positive terms. And then there's one minus term, and that's what's coming out. So we call that the exhaust air or the return air. So that's the equation we have. How do we solve it? Again, you can look back at your notes for flux chamber because this is really the same equation. What we're gonna do is first rewrite in what we call standard form for a first order ODE. If you remember our standard form was DC DT equal B minus AC. We had for Y, a mole fraction, we had it for MBB, mass body burden. We had it for C, for flux chamber. It's all the same, you're just using a different variable. So I'm gonna rewrite this equation. The key is to arrange all terms with a C and all terms without C. So notice in this equation, there are terms that have no C and there are terms that have a C. So all the terms with C, I see only one here. All the terms without C, I see this and this. And of course, the left-hand side remains the same. And we're going to divide by V, the volume. This will be very important later on. I'm going to rewrite the above equation. It becomes DC, DT, I've divided by V, equal all those terms without a C, QCA plus S over V, these two terms. And then the other one minus Q times C divide by V. That's our equation. And so therefore we can easily see in terms of the standard form that this is equal to V and this without the minus sign is equal to A since the minus sign is already included up in that equation. And so the solution is same as any first order ODE. If A and B are constants, we can get an analytical solution. And it's the same equation we had for MBB, et cetera, previously. CSS, steady state, minus C at some time, over CSS minus C of zero, the initial condition, equal E to the minus AT. That's our solution. Where CSS is the steady state value, this term on the left goes to zero when the whole system goes to a steady state value. So B equal AC. So CSS is equal to B over A. So here, CSS equal CA plus S over Q. The next module, I'm going to talk about cases where A and or B are not constants. In HVAC literature, and HVAC, of course, means heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. They use something called N, the number of room changes, more technically, the number of room changes per unit time. And time is typically in hours. The equation is N equal Q over V, where Q is this volume flow rate of air coming in, and V is the room volume. The room volume is not just the dimensions of the room multiplied by each other to get a volume if it's a rectangular room. You have to subtract furniture and desks and file cabinets and things like that that are not part of the air. It's actually the air volume in the room. The dimensions are volume per time over volume, and the volumes cancel so you get one over time, and typical units, one over age. Sometimes I use HR as hours of a caution. In ideal displacement ventilation, let's suppose N is one over hour. That means that every hour, all the air in the room is exchanged. And that's why they call this room changes or room exchanges. And for an ideal displacement ventilation, this would indeed be the case. You have your flow coming in 
and you have kind of a piston of that air that's moving up. Your exhaust is up here. So the Q is coming out. And if you have a volume V and you exchange that whole volume in one hour, that's what that means, the number of room changes. So you're taking the whole volume of that air. And if it's ideal displacement ventilation, it moves up like a piston. So you got all this fresh air coming in and it just moves up with time and you got this stale air coming out. And so in one hour, you've changed exactly all of the air in that hour with fresh air. But for well mixed or what we call dilution ventilation, N does not mean all the air is exchanged. Why is that? Because with dilution ventilation, say you have a bunch of contaminant in here, smoke or something, and you have clean air coming in and the dirty air is going out. And suppose you're clearing smoke out of this room with ventilation and you have some concentration versus time. It's decaying like this and at T equal one over N, N has units of one over hours. So one over N has units of hours. So for example, if you have one room exchange, like we're talking about N equals one over H. So one room exchange per hour. Then when T is one hour, you're not going to get all the smoke out. For the dilution ventilation, the smoke would all get kind of pushed out and you'd have perfectly clean air coming in. But here, the smoke slowly dissipates. It disappears more gradually and exponentially. So at time t equal 1 over n, you still have some smoke there. You still have some old air in the room. So we call it one air exchange per hour, one room exchange or room change, but it doesn't really mean that. It doesn't mean you've eliminated all the air from the room and put in all new air because it's an exponential decay. And that's because of the well-mixed condition. And in fact, if you keep going in time, you would go eventually to zero, but theoretically you never get there. Time for an example. A fire has occurred in a hotel room. Here's the volume of the room. And immediately after the fire is extinguished, we have some hydrogen cyanide, HCN, in the room. Its mass concentration is 10 gram per meter cube. So they were burning some nasty stuff there. Firemen blow fresh air into the room at a certain volume flow rate. So this is the supply coming in. The fresh air actually has some ambient concentration and we're gonna say that's 1.0 milligram per meter cubed. But inside it's 10 grams per meter cubed. Calculate how long the firemen need to wait before entering the room in order to stay below the STEL. Short-term exposure limit is appropriate because you don't have the firefighters fighting that fire for eight hours a day, 40 days a week. The firemen will probably be in the room no more than 15 minutes. Remember this STEL is based on 15 minutes. The STEL is equal to five milligram per meter cubed. That means that a fireman can tolerate that for 15 minutes at five milligram per meter cubed but let's set this problem up. We have a room, we have our Q coming in, we have our CA from outside, we have a Q going out, and inside we have C of T and volume V, and coming out is C of T. Remember, because it's well mixed, and this is another key that we talked about with flux chambers, well mixed means the value of C is the same everywhere, not right here where the fresh air is coming in, but there's a kind of a zone around there where anything beyond a little bit from that immediately gets whipped around by the vortices in the air. So it's the same everywhere, including here where it comes out. So this is C of T, it's the same as this C of T coming out. And the flow rate is the same, assuming there's no leaks or anything. In this particular case, S equals zero, the fire is out. C of zero is given and S equals zero. We're not adding any more contaminant. We're just clearing this out. The fire is out. C naught is the initial concentration, 10 gram per meter cubed. I'm gonna convert that to 10,000 milligram per meter cubed so we have consistent units. And the STEL is five milligram per meter cubed. And that's a short-term exposure level. So this is huge, this is gigantic. In a situation like this, this would be very dangerous for the firemen to go in with a hydrogen cyanide level that high. So they're going to have to wait. And that's why this question is set up this way. How long the firemen need to wait before entering the room so that their C goes below this level of STEL? To solve this, 
we know that since Q, S, C, A are all constants, we can solve this analytically. C, A plus S over Q. Well, lucky for us, S is zero here. So C, S, S is equal to C, A. Now, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. Just think about it physically. We have fresh air coming in with a concentration of C, A. We're assuming that that remains constant throughout this whole process. It probably won't. It'll slowly decay too, but just suppose that's true. And you let this go for a long time. Eventually, all this contaminant will go out and everything coming in is at CA. So this whole room will be filled with CA. So that's why CSS here is equal to CA. 1.0 milligram per meter cubed, assuming CA is a constant. The solution is using our equation that we had before, CSS minus C over CSS minus C naught equals EXP negative QT over volume. And we can solve this for T. T equal negative V over Q times natural log of CSS minus C over CSS minus C naught. And that's our answer in variables. And when you plug in the numbers, 10,000, one, these are all milligram per meter cubed. C itself is what I want, which is five, and CSS is one. So you plug all those in with the given volume and flow rate. You get T equals 23.499 minutes, about a half hour. So these firemen better wait about a half hour before they go into the room without equipment or they can have some problems. We solved this analytically, and I showed you uh, Rungakata technique before when we talked about first order ODEs. I have on the website a MATLAB file and a Excel file to solve this exact problem. So here's a screenshot of MATLAB. Here I have T start, T stop, initial. Here's the actual Rungakata subroutine in MATLAB. This is just plotting, filling out the table, etc. And this is a function to specify the slope. Q over volume is A, B is Q times C A plus S. In this case, S is zero. And the slope DC DT equal B minus A C. So this is the slope. That's how I set that up. And remember our answer was 23.499 minutes. And these are in minutes. So 23.499 will be somewhere in here. And that gives you 5.0 milligram per meter cubed. You see that MATLAB is also giving us the correct answer. And I also plotted it to see that exponential decay. Starting at 10,000 on this plot, by the time you have 20 minutes or so, you can't distinguish it from zero anymore. I did the same thing in Excel. All this stuff is the Rungakutta equations. And I put in all my constants. I used a 0.1 minute delta T. We start at 10,000 and it starts decaying. By the time you get to 23.5, it goes to 4.99. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.